This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. Welcome everyone to a brand new episode of the Action Movie Guys podcast. Now, this is episode one. 89. This is Spider Man Far From Home from 2019. I'm your host, Alex Figueroa. My co host is Nate from Netflix Reviews. All right, Nate, how long has it been since you've seen Far From Home? So, funny story Homecoming, I saw twice at the theater, and then I have seen since. No, no way home, I saw twice at the theater. Far From Home, I saw this one time at the theater, and I have not watched it since. So, it's been since 2019 in the theater, the last time I saw it. This is going to be a hot take on this mm-hmm. one. I did not see this movie on my rewatch of Spider-Man. Oh, you skipped it. I I skipped oh. it. And there's a reason why I skipped this movie. Okay. I do not like this movie. So we're going to be talking about it. And I watched it for today. Sure. I watched it for the podcast. But there's going to be a reason why it. I do not. <laughs> I suffered. Yes, I suffered through it. And why did I suffer through it? You guys are going to find out in a few seconds why I suffered through it. But before that, let's check out if the critics in the audience suffered through Far From Home from 2019. Nate, well, hit those numbers. If this is a hot take, if your take is a hot take, it might be because of this. Because this this baby got a 90% critic score and a 95% audience score. Ooh. 90 Five. Now, I'll be honest, uh, it's very surprising that the 95 audience is the 90 critics is not because especially with Spider-Man, but the MCU movies generally get good reviews. You have a couple in there that are like in the 60s, like the new Thor and Eternals. But other than that, they're always like super high. So that's not but 95 from audience for this movie. A little (laughs) weird, but I don't know. You know, we'll see if your take is a hot take because maybe I don't love it that much either. I mean, again, I haven't watched it since in the theater, so uh, we'll see. Again, this is the point that I like about the, I love about the the podcast is because these critics are so high on these damn Sometimes, movies and audience, yeah. but it's always our personal appearance, uh, uh, our, our opinions yeah. on these films. Did we enjoy it yeah. amongst those numbers? Well, we're going to find out right now because you're going to get into the main character, which again is Tom Holland coming back as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. All right, now last time I gave him a five, and you know what I'm gonna give him this time? A five. Because (laughs) because none of my issues with this movie are Peter Parker, like as a character. I actually Mm. like that he got some new things to deal with. He's still in high school. This is the Nate, the Nate checklist, right? We've been over this. This is our freaking sixth Spider-Man movie, or however many we've watched. I love the high school stuff. He's still in high school. Even though this is this takes place after Endgame, which means they're all they were all blipped to dust. And came back. So he was basically dead and now is back. The earth is different, right? The kids who were like in middle school are now in high school. And they've got, you know, so there's there's school drama he got to deal with. This movie's on a school trip, which I never got to go on an awesome school trip when I was a kid, but or in in high school. But if I did, it would have been the time of my life. So I love the there. You know, they get to go to Europe and stuff. I love that. I like the MJ storyline in this. I do. I like their dynamic. It's good. I, I think it's good. They have good chemistry. You know, they date in real life. So maybe that helps. She was like very she's similar to how she's in the first movie. But now you can see she's opening a little more because she likes him. So now there's that, you know, she's now being she wears a dress in one scene instead of always being so like grungy looking. You know what I mean? So I like that. And then he got to deal with uh, new things. You know, Spider um, Iron Man is Tony Stark is dead. So now people are looking to him to be like the new. And so I like all that teenage stuff that they do with the character. And again, as Spider-Man, I think he's great. I really don't have any problems with his Spider-Man portrayal. So I gave him a five. I don't have any problems with his performance or with the way that what the character goes through. I like the arc that he has in this movie. So I'm fine with it. It's a five. I will say this. When it comes to my hate, it's not my man Spider-Man. <laughs> Because I like Spider-Man. I gave him a five also. He is Spider-Man. There's nothing I can do to it. He is Peter Parker. He is Spider-Man. He is still young. I mean, this took years over. I mean, it took two years later, right? Because 2017 was Homecoming. So this was made. Yeah, it was made like two years later. Right. Yeah. And he still looked young. So yeah. he's only a year old in the movie. There. He's supposed to be 16 now yeah. instead of 15. I thought it was amazing. I'm not going to go all crazy and go wide. I liked him. 
he is he fits the bill. He's amazing as Spider Man. Nate said everything, so I'm not gonna jump on it because we're gonna get to where I want to get to is the main villain. Oh. Let's get to it. I gave it a five yeah. in terms of the the main ca- uh, Spider Man uh, main character. Yeah. Nate gave it a five also. Let's get right into the main villain, of course, yeah, Mysterio. Mysterio. Okay. Yeah. So I, I I may be less harsh than you. We'll see. Just I'm just judging off. I'm give I'm judging off the vibes here. Judge the five. But I don't have a high, like a very high score either. I have issues okay. with this villain, and I, there's things I like. So I'll talk about those really quick, and then there's things I don't like. Like, I love the way he looks. As far as choosing this villain, like Mysterio, uh, well, one, I like the choice. I do like the choice of Mysterio. Like, that is another one. You know, they used Vulture in the first movie. Now they're going Mysterio. They're not going with the same old, same old, which is cool. So I, I like the choice of Mysterio. I like the way he looks. I think they nailed it with the, the helmet, with the fog in it. You can't see his face. I like the costume. I like the green. Like, I like the powers, the way they look. The powers. Yeah. I like the way they look. With the, <laughs> with the, <laughs> you know, with yeah. the green. and Like, it visually is pleasing. I also, last thing I like is I do like the casting of Jake Gyllenhaal. I like Jake Gyllenhaal. Hall. I think he's a good actor. Yeah. So I like him. Okay. Now on the negatives. Once again, <laughs> now, this is the second straight movie that we get a villain who is just a Tony Stark villain. The first uh, uh, Vulture's mad because Tony Stark fired him, so he's stealing all this stuff and building all the. Okay, he's, he's bitter. This guy, Tony Stark fired us. We're all bitter. It's like, okay, none of these villains really have a problem with Spider Man until they have a problem with Spider Man. I kind of don't like that aspect of it. Like every other villain before this, it was just Spider-Man that they want to get rid of because he's interfering or whatever the case, right? Even some of them had a person, Harry, he had a personal vendetta against Spider-Man. You know, none of this is personal with these guys. They're mad at Tony Stark, who's now dead, by the way. These guys are still mad at him, even though he's fully dead. They can't just move on with their lives. It's sour grapes. And I'm not a big fan of sour grapes villains. He fired us. He, he called my technology barf. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, it's so wimpy. I'm not crazy about it. Also, this guy has no powers. It's all, the real villain in this movie is drones, which was a problem I had the first time I watched it, which is maybe why I didn't rewatch it. Do they lead to some cool visuals? A hundred percent, yes. I do like when that he first fights Spider-Man, the one where it ends with him getting hit by the train. Like, I like the way a lot of that looks. It's cool, but I wish Mysterio did that because he actually had some sort of powers. You know what I mean? If he was like a Doctor Strange type where he can actually do these things and I'd give him a four and a half, maybe a five, you know? But because he's a whiny guy who's mad that he got fired and it's it's just drones that are doing all the work and it's a production, it's a show. So I fell in the middle. I gave him a three. I think he, again, I like how he looks. I do like at the end what he ultimately ends up. He does cause a problem for Peter Parker, which I I gave a bonus point. It would have been a two. I gave him a bonus point. He outed him. He made him look like a bad guy and told her just for that. I get him to the three, but otherwise probably a two in general. I I, I don't really like Mysterio that much. Well, you know what? (laughs) That doesn't even help him in this (laughs) one. Okay. I gave him a flat Ooh, one. Okay. Tell okay. Us. I do not like this villain at all. Actually, I'm not even calling him a villain. Okay. He's not even a villain. He didn't do shit, to be really honest. He didn't do shit. I hated this when I saw this the first time. I hated it when I saw it the second time. And I definitely hate it on the rewatch. I do not like villains like this. And and, it, and I'm telling you right now, people, I hate villains that hide behind technology and makes them look superior. And then when they fight the damn hero, they get the asses kicked in two seconds. I hate it. I, I just hate it. And it's not because of comic books. Because when this movie came out, there was another movie that came out and I hated it too. And I said, oh no. And that's the Invisible Man. Oh, okay. That pissed me off even more. Because I'm a big fan of those Universal Monsters. Same. So when I went to see it, I was like, oh, yeah, this is cool. And when I found out it's a fucking suit, I said, you got no. I said, this is fucking doo-doo dumb. I said, I don't even want to talk about it. And when I hear talking about that, but it was the same technology as that. Right. But manipulating the, the environment to see what you want to see. And the problem with that is how can you develop a, 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 a love-hate relationship where all he wanted was those stupid glasses? Like, that was his main goal was just to get Tony Stark's glasses. And I was like, okay, fine. How's he going to get it? Well, let's just fake a, 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 a hero where everyone's going to see. And I'm like, this is so fucking dumb. Like, to me, it's so dumb. And we're going to talk about his storyline. Yeah. 
But it's just, I get so frustrated because it's like two hours and something minutes that I sat down and there was artificial fucking things that was going on. And it's like, it just mind boggling. In terms of Jake Gyllenhaal, he was a great Mysterio. I'm not taking that away from yeah. him. He was amazing. A great actor. I like him. He, I the like him a lot, to be good. honest with you. Yeah. Yes, the performance was excellent, but the character was so weak. The same with the Mandarin. Mandarin was mad cool in the trailer, right? He was just like, Mr. President, if you don't do this. And next thing you find out, he's like, hey, my name is uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm an actor. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's the same thing with this. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Tony Stark firing him. <laughs> he <laughs> called it Gary, right? Oh, yeah. He was like, hey, Gary, remember what Tony Stark did to you? And then you see Tony Stark, you know, he built his reactor with scraps yeah. in a cave. <laughs> and I was just like, what? <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's like, for me, it's like, that's not motivation because this is something that I was telling you for, for, for far from home. I mean, from homecoming. A lot of people did not like the Spider-Man because it was the Iron Man story, pretty much. This is not Spider-Man. This is nothing to do with Spider-Man. I like Vulture. I think he's a way better villain than Mysterio because he was actually a villain in a suit fighting Spider-Man, right? right? But in this case, it's like, we you're right. We got two movies that it's all about Tony Stark's. Yeah. And it's like, wait a minute. This is called Spider-Man. Spider-Man, right? And like, not nothing. Like, it, it just frustrates me. And it, it was sucks. You're right. I love this suit. I loved when he did the CGI thing. I was like, this is actually really fun. This is really cool. But when I found out, and when I really found out the first time watching it, that it was just a a, a fake hologram, I was heated. Oh man, you can ask my wife. I was. You know what else pissed, doesn't bro. make sense? Like, no way. Two. Now that I yeah. think about it, you know, at the end, in the end fight, Spider-Man is like in. He's like in the hologram, right? Yeah. But how come when the other things were happening, no one else was in the hologram? Like if the hologram's all around them, how come? It's a plot hole. Yeah. How come it's he can be hole. inside of it and no one else can be inside of it? No. Especially his his boy, his, uh, what's his friend? Uh, the Happy? Oh, what the hell's his name? Uh, or Ned? No, not Happy. The, the Yeah, Ned and his girlfriend were in the middle of the hologram. Right. And they still look like a hologram. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a plot hole. You got buildings collapse. Again, there was a lot of things. Oh, uh, we got to talk about the story. We got to talk about because there's, <laughs> okay. there's just a lot of things that just. Main villain, I'm going to give it a one because honestly, it's not a main villain. It, I, it is what it is. He All he wanted was sunglasses. Yeah. That basically fine. If people want to be like, oh, you're being really harsh, I'm going to be fucking harsh because they, they, they mind fucked me on this one and I didn't like it. I didn't like Fair. that one. But. With that said, let's get to action sequences. Um, they're cool. They are cool. I think they look yeah. really good visually. I like. I wish that these big elemental monsters were actually somehow the villains. Real. The big lava fire guy looks cool. The water guy looks cool. The last one that looks like a freaking demon with smoke and it, like they look cool. The action scenes in this one are way bigger than the first movie as far as like destruction and like they're really large. I'm still only giving it a four because you know me. I just these superhero movies, unless they do something really different than each other. And this is just big CGI monsters. So it's cool. They do look cool. I think the CGI is really good. Again, I, I my favorite kind of action or fight is that one where he's just Peter Parker and he's like falling through the glass and there's the smoke all around. And then the, like that one was the most intriguing to me. And it's like barely a fight, really. It's just him getting tossed around and stuff. But if 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 Mysterio actually had the ability to do this and it wasn't drones would have been way more awesome. As such, I still give it a four. I, the action, like Peter Parker to me, is not the fault of the movie. It's not the action. So I gave it a four. Yeah, look, when it comes to action, I enjoyed it a lot. I'm not, I mean, I could talk all the crap I want about the villain. When it comes to action, this sucker delivered on the action. Way more than the first one. Uh -huh. This had more action than the first uh -huh. one. I gave it a 4.5. This has really good action sequences. Even the last fight when he's inside the dome and he's jumping and, and it, it was a it's lot cool. of repetitive there, but I enjoyed it. It was really fun. Very video game yeah. aspect there. I did like the other scenes also with him doing the fighting. Uh, again, it's all CGI uh, hologram crap which is annoying. Most of the fights is all CGI, which is kind of annoying as hell, but they look good. And I, I'm not going to take it away because it's, it's holograms. It actually looked good. Him saving that whole scene in the beginning where he's in, um, in Italy and he's like swebbing around the building yeah. and he's wearing the, 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 was it the mask? Oh on yeah. Like the masquerade mask to hide his face. Yeah. 
He had a masquerade mask. I liked it. I was like, you know what? This is actually really cool. One thing that Marvel does very well with the Spider-Mans is that the that the action sequences do feel like a comic book movie. Like, regardless of how much we hate the the whole villain thing, that sequence looked really good, man. Even with the water monster coming out, you see him swinging, and he's in the black suit yeah. with the fire one. And I was like, yo, this is really cool. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it kudos. I'm not going to hurt the movie as much because it actually delivered on action. And that's what we're here for. And that's the category. Gave it a 4.5 because it did actually a good job on that storyline. All right. So, again, this might be one where you go a little more harder than me, but I don't. There's a lot. Of, again, there's things I like, things I don't like. Most of the stuff I like, I kind of mentioned with Peter because I like all the Peter Parker stuff. I like the relationship with MJ. I like all the stuff when it's just there on the school trip and it's kind of a comedy. I think one thing these movies nailed is the high school comedy type stuff. It works for me. I love high school movies in general. And so that stuff works pretty well. I like Ned. I actually like the little storyline with his friend and and the girl with Ned and the girl. I thought that was funny, you know, where he's like, you know, we were going to be bachelors. And then as soon as they land, he's like, oh, yeah, that's my girlfriend now. Yeah. I thought that was funny. Like <laughs> that was well done. Yeah. I, I So I like the Peter stuff and I do like the very end of the movie. I thought that was a good way to end it. I like that him and MJ, they get together. It wasn't, you see, they did the whole romance, but they don't overdo it. It's just enough. It's in and out. Quick, we don't got to be too dramatic. Perfect, great. Okay, now, yeah. downsides. One, what I just mentioned, I don't understand the, the hologram thing. So, to my knowledge, the hologram, the 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 drones make the holograms, and the drones are the ones blowing stuff up. Like they're shooting the buildings, they're shooting the bridges, they're blowing the crap up. But like, I just feel like if that happened right next to somebody, if you could be inside of the hologram, if he can be inside and see then everyone should be able to do that if they are within a certain area. And it seems like that's not the case. So that's kind of weird. I don't really like, oh, there's another thing I don't like with, uh, oh, with Nick Fury. I just, I I hate that it's, what are they? The Kree or whatever? Is that what they are? Isn't that the Kree? With, the aliens. With, the, the ones at the end credit. Yeah, so the Kree. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. I, know, I hate that. I hate that. I think it's dumb. Him and like Maria Hill and, and Samuel Jackson the whole time are just decree. Pretty dumb. I don't understand why they did that. It still hasn't paid off. I think maybe in Secret Invasion or something, they'll do something with it. But, you know, it's three years later now and it's still really no reason for that. Plus, he felt shoehorned in like Tony Stark felt natural in Homecoming. And we're the one we're doing next week. I feel like Doctor Strange felt natural in No Way Home, like the reason he's there. Nick Fury's just yeah. in this so they can have an MCU guy in it. And it feels the most forced out of all of them. So I didn't really like that. And again, we talked about the villain. I hate the whole little group of people that are all, they're all in on it and all this kind of stuff. And they're all just former Tony Stark people. I gave it a three. I definitely think it's the weakest storyline out of, gosh, I mean, maybe all, all the Spider-Man movies. Like I was the least invested in this. I'm not saying it's the worst of all of them, but the storyline is the least like engaging to me for the most part. Yeah. So I gave it a three. I will say this. I know a lot of people are going to listen to this and go, oh, he's going to rip this one a new one. I gave it a three also. I, I thought it was a good storyline. And the reason why is because this is part of an entire timeline that's connected. Right. If this was a solo movie, I would have fucking gave this a low ass score <laughs> because I did not like the whole Mysterio crap. But... Everything you said is spot on. I did like all the Spider-Man stuff when even with the Aunt May and Happy yeah, storyline. I like yeah, that. Was that was a, yeah, it was awesome. Thought that was good. Him with Mary Jane, awesome. Ned and the girl, awesome. Even the teachers were funny. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> they were funny. Even Flash. What's up, Flash Mob? He, like we're here in uh, in Germany. Yeah, or I love it was. when he punches him when he knocks yeah. him out when he won't give him the glasses, oh, the and, glasses. Just, like, and knocks yeah. him out. It's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was. Yeah. So I thought it was good. I was like, you know what? The, that, those things were fun. I agree with you. The Nick Fury and Maria Hill, I like Maria Hill a lot. And I do like Nick Fury. The most underutilized characters in the entire MCU franchise. <laughs> For sure. You could, right? 100%. Like we have like 20 something movies and we still have not got a Nick Fury movie at all, which makes no damn. And I know he would make not tons of money. But if you write a good story with Nick Fury, I think you will have a lot of people to go to the theater to back it up. Like, you know what? He's really the face of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. They never even gave he him should get a prequel love. Movie. Like how it shows yeah. how he came up or something. Like Black Widow got a prequel. I agree. He should get a prequel. I think that would work. Yeah. Like year one of yeah. S.H.I.E.L.D. So at least you can see him with the patch in the eye and then you can see whatever awesome. happens I'm there from for there. It. 
Yeah, I agree with you. That would be fun. But yeah, very underutilized, those two characters. Jake Gyllenhaal, again, I, I like him as an actor, but that character just stunk. And it was just so weird that the, the machine told him, if you take off this protocol, you're going to get shot right during the battle and he goes i don't care shoot spider-man and what happens he gets shot and i was just like that's so and i know you don't like this and i know for a fact i could be wrong but you always hate movies with coincidence right oh yeah yeah i, I know you said that a lot the conveniences i hate that yeah but that was very like up your alley right like because he says you know the computer tells him if you shut this off you're gonna get shot and then two seconds later he got shot and gets the kill well, i thought he was maybe doing that so he could be a martyr so he can like blame it all on spider-man yeah. But yeah, it's kind of dumb. If he was trying to live at all, it was very dumb. I mean, I don't yeah, know if he it was just, or not. not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just it yeah, it just pretty. He sent out a message the from beyond scene. the grave. Like how if he yeah, how do you do that? Uh, how do you hack into that? How do you send that? Vi- oh, he well, sent no, it no. before. He sent it before when he was alive. No, well, no, no. Remember the guy was in the computer while he was he was hacking. Oh, you think it was the he was hacking the, the, the fleet. Guy. The guy who was oh. in the cave. With scraps. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It, that Jack guy. Bridges. Yeah. It, it just, it's it just so, I, I, again, I gave it a three. I thought it was a good storyline that fits the entire timeline overall. So overall, I gave it a three and a half. A seven out of 10 is where my brain goes. It's good. Yeah. It's not a bad movie. It has a pretty lame villain. Now, this is not the first Spider-Man movie to have a lame villain. So it's not like, you know, it's not like this is so rare. But I will say this is my yeah. least favorite of the MCU Spider-Mans. I know we haven't done next week's yet, but I tell you right now, this is my least favorite one. Uh, again, I didn't want to watch it again. I didn't rush out to see it again. I haven't watched it since I bought it on 4K. Like, I'm just never in the mood to watch this one. Homecoming, we we did it for, I was like, oh, cool. I can't wait to pop that one back in. This one is just like, and and you're right. It's so tied to the events in the MCU with the blip. Like, the whole beginning of the movie is them explaining, because this came right after Endgame. The, the blip. Yeah, so it's all it's all about the blip, which I did yeah. like the morning announcements part. I thought that was hilarious, like, where they're showing it the in memory and they show the people who died. It's like Black Widow and Vision yeah. and... Funny. I, I I think the humor, the humor gets me through this movie because I think it's funny. Those aspects work. The actual villain, Nick Fury. So it's a three and a half for me. It's it's good, but it's just good. I gave it a three. Now, my thing, is, my question to you is if this movie was never tied, let's just say Spider-Man Tom Holland was never tied into the MCU franchise. Yeah. Would you really think those numbers that they pulled out happen? I don't think it would. No, no, because uh, well, it, if 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 homecoming, because see, this is a sequel to Homecoming, so it's like okay, right. if, if you take out Tony Stark, that whole story, like you, it would be a totally different movie. So it's yeah. hard to say. I will say no, I don't think so. But if you had this same movie minus Nick Fury plus elect plus Mysterio, it could be really good if Mysterio was actually had magic powers instead of tricks but again if it wasn't tied to mcu it wouldn't be drones it wouldn't be tony stark so it might be better you know what it might be better if it, if it wasn't tied to, to tony stark so much you might be right it could I don't think be the a better movie would be this much but i think the movie i might yeah. like it better it could be i mean it could have felt like a real spider-man movie yeah so you far these like, oh, first wow, two like spider-man they feel it's not they feel like spider-man movie movies featuring spider-man instead of pure spider-man movies which the other ones had the advantage and, and that, of, right because they're not tied to anything. It, but but right and that's remember i told you that in the when we did uh homecoming i was like the difference like i'm not putting this with the other two because it's not fair i mean the advantage of this spider-man is that he came in contact with all the heroes in that world with captain america i mean you know he's friends with all yeah, these look guys. at it this way look at the first iron man who has nothing to go off of look at the first thor what they have like agent colson comes up like it's very loose yeah. ties Look at the first Captain America. Look at the first, you know, and then you look at the later ones and they have the advantage of having all this 20 other movies that already happened. You know what I mean? And because of that, it feels like they lean on it. They lean on it a lot. And I get they want to tie the movies together, but there's not a there's not in these ones so far. There's not a lot of individual Spider-Man stuff. It just feels like the MCU's Spider-Man. And it is. But it, it can be slightly detrimental, even though I still enjoy the films. That's what I want to say. Like, I'm not hating on the movie or nothing. I don't like this movie. I'm never going to go back to this movie. I just don't enjoy it as much as Homecoming. Yeah. But it does feel 
like an MCU where the other two franchises, uh, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire, they felt like their own Spider-Man movie. Like if I went to pick up a comic, this is the version that we're getting of Spider-Man. And I like that, to be really honest with you. This just felt like going, oh, okay, I'm going from Captain America to, oh, Spider-Man. The same, you know, the same shots, the same color, the main, the characters are all in together. So, yeah, again, it could hurt or not hurt. So depends on wherever you want to land on, but it's okay. I gave it a three for overall. You gave it a three total points. Um, The total for me, that comes out to an 18.5. It's still good. It's still oh. good, but it's definitely the lowest. I'll tell you that right now. We have, again, we haven't done next week, <laughs> but this is not, this is lower for me. So 18 and a half total. Yeah. I gave this a 16 and a half. That's one of your um, lowest. I don't know if it's general. the lowest. Up. I think for, the, could for be all the lowest. Done, this might be like the lowest or one of them. Yeah, it could be. But other than that, Nate, what is coming up next on the podcast? Okay, so of course, next episode, we will be starting our Liam Neeson month with a little bit of the old A-Team. Of course, a remake of old TV show from the 80s. We're going to be reviewing that. And then next week, we're wrapping up. We are wrapping up Spider-Man with Spider-Man No Way Home. The last one, our, what, eighth Spider-Man movie, right? There's eight of them. Mm -hmm. We've done seven already. And unlike the Roger Moore Bond films, these feel like they're flying right by. They feel like they're flying right by, to be honest. <laughs> and we're doing a bonus episode of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yes. So Just for everyone. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're wrapping up Spider-Man next week. And then, of course, next episode will be uh, Liam Neeson kickoff with the A-Team. Yep. Other than that, if you want to follow us on our social media accounts, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Netflix Reviews. Check out the podcast with him and his friends called Netflix Movie Reviews. Think Action Movie Guys. Head over to YouTube.com slash Geeks and Flicks or go to our official website at www.geeksandflicks.com. You want to join the Patreon and watch the behind the scenes of your favorite podcast, then go to www.geeksandflicks.com. Other than that, I'm your host, Alex Figueroa, and that is Nate from Netflix Reviews. Be awesome to each other and geek out. Geek out.